Hello and welcome to a game of Dota 2. It is a group A game where Muthi kind of has to win if they want to still try to help someone else get themselves into the playoffs because they themselves are not going to the playoffs. We have a very fast draft, faster than I think the all the other games that we've had so far. And of course this is a Beyond, a Beyond Summit presentation for the Red Bull Esports Champions League brought to you by Shiver, that's me, and my co-caster Vikramond. Vikramond, I was gonna say like wow compared to yesterday we might even be having less delay and then of course the delay from the previous game happened right but oh well unfortunately that was a pretty long delay but it's it's okay um vg this is an odd situation for them they are almost certainly going to advance to the playoffs yeah. but they still really need this win it, if they don't win if musi manages to take out the win uh, VG falls into this weird situation where if Royal beat Orange, not that that's terrifically likely to happen, but if they do, you end up with a three-way tie, everybody beats everybody else, and you potentially need to end up playing tie-breaking matches. So they would love to just take this and rest easy, because if they win this, they're absolutely guaranteed to go through. Yeah, Life Sealer Shadow Demon already a very strong combination. I mean, setting up for an open wound. They don't have to be on the lane together. We've seen plenty of Life Stealers soloing it up. Today, yesterday, and the day before as well. Sorry for the sound that's just passing through. I think you can hear that anyway. We've got an Alchemist and a Queen of Pain picked up by Musi, and that's already also a very strong draft from them. It kind of shows a bit more about what they're planning on doing, but they are able to ban out some of the strong solo mids that they don't want to see up against the Queen of Pain. Like the Storm, they already had the OD banned out, and Clockwork and Darkseer were the other two bans that they did for the other team just to... Quickly run it through, by the way, we still have an Io in the team, which is something that VG definitely uses. But we have got a Bet, as well as the Visage and two supports, Crystal Main and Rubik Band out. And the Puck means another core for Musi, and that means that they are done with their cores and just need supports. Yeah, Shrek. the only other option would be the never seen Alchemist support, which I don't, I don't think we'll get it this time either. Uh, really quickly, just to run through, I know people are going to ask about this again, and I wish that they would just standardize their names, but the first slot, the drafter for Vici here is CTY, yeah. he's just playing under an alias, and then uh, the last name, if you don't read Chinese, that's, that's ZSMJ playing, so that's just his name in Chinese. Yeah. So, VG have their full roster, no stand-ins, it's a LAN, they're not going to bring a stand-in to a LAN unless, you know, somebody breaks their hand or something. So they are playing with their full roster. Yeah, and we have got the first support picked up. It is the Nyx Assassin. No IO this game, apparently. We have got a Lion picked up as the last pickup for Vici. That kind of means that we're going to probably see an aggressive trend with the Lashrek, Shadow Demon, and Lion. And then Life Sealer in the mid lane, Nature's Prophet in the safe lane. Probably something like that. On the side of uh, Esport Musi, I mean, they have got a good well, good set of solo laners, I should say. The Puck could take on the safe lane. And can deal with an aggressive trial lane by himself. I think Queen of Pain will probably be mid, and Alchemist can run then in an aggressive trial lane, probably yeah. to dodge the aggressive trial lane coming out from Vici. Quite possibly. Um, let's not count out the possibility that CTY plays a non traditional mid hero here either. This is a player who has played Shadow Demon mid. Uh, Lion mid is also something that a lot of people like to talk about, even though I'm not sure it's actually very good. So it, those are both possibilities. Lion mid is the very, very outside possibility. I would rank Shadow Demon mid as a, a more, more definite possibility. So those things could happen. Yeah, and Enchantress is the last pickup. I think this is the fastest draft that we've seen in the entire tournament so far. In the it is going to be Lion mid. It's going to be Lion mid. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, so cool is, yeah, it, it is cool. Um. He has certain advantages now in the mid. If he, for instance, if he has a ward on the high ground, like here, uh, if he levels his stun and his mana drain, he can devastate somebody's mana once that mana drain is rank 2, rank 3. The flip side is, Lion is extremely weak early on as far as his early levels. He has poor starting stats. His uh, Earth Spike deals next to no damage. It, it deals 60 damage. So he's, he deals 56 auto attack damage right now. This means that Earth Spike does less damage than a Lion auto attack. Uh, and the stun is not particularly long either. Now, if he's not harassed very early on, Lion does fine and he stabilizes, but uh, his, the first few levels will not be fun. 
So I guess CTY in the mid on the lion. Maybe he's practicing for the 1v1 tournament on day four. Mm -hmm. That leaves the tri lane of FY on the Shadow Demon, Fenrir on the the Lashrak, and ZSMJ on the Life Stealer. As you said, Shiva, aggressive tri lane. And the Nature's Prophet on the safe lane, as I think you I think you actually called the whole thing. Apart so, from yeah. the lion? Yeah. Because I said Life Stealer mid lion right. as support. But I, I like the lion. He got pulled a little bit, but I think that it's quite needed there up against the possibly one of the stronger solo mid lanes, which will probably be... Never mind. Never mind that. I thought I was going to see either Queen of Pain or Puck mid. Looks like I'm wrong on both counts, but let's just run over them all before I uh, reveal the rest. So we have got T playing the Nyx Assassin on the safe lane. We'll be playing a support role. He'll be supporting KKK on the Queen of Pain. In the mid lane, we have got the Alchemist. Um... Let's call him Bio. Yeah, let's call him Bio. Bio is a good name. He is Bio, and he'll be playing the Alchemist solo mid up against the Lion, and already looking at harassment. This harassment is actually really painful. We saw it in a game earlier. If he also has an unstable concoction, that's gonna be taking like half the XP for or the HP from Lion away. Uh, on the top lane, we have in the aggressive jungle Papa Jean playing the Enchantress, and on the Puck is gonna be playing. Well, it's not Seven, but it's the other guy that has got his last words. I don't know, you know it's that. FYMS. FYMS. It is FYMS. Cool. Weird lanes, definitely. The aggressive Enchantress as part of a dual lane top with the Puck. This is actually, they could pressure 2-2 two -two very heavily. We've seen the Enchantress work out very well before. Keep in mind she's got two Centaur Conquerors. So this is actually trouble for Lion. Like I mentioned, the, the stereotype with Lion is that for the first few levels he's a ranged creep. And a ranged creep is not going to survive when he gets unstable. Have they actually used the concoction too early? I think they may have. Yeah, but the and first level on the bottom, bottom lane. lane. Yeah. I thought that it was going to happen on the middle lane as well, but... He noticed it, he heard it, and he ran away. And the Queen of Pain goes down in the middle lane. Top lane is going to get harassed a little bit, but Queen of Pain down on the bottom lane, rather. I said it wrong. Of course, uh... VG Gaming getting themselves the first blood, better yet, the Shadow Demon gets the first blood, and they have also taken control of the Radiant Jungle, with Fenrir actually rotating towards the mid lane, might be able to do something, and we're gonna probably see Alchemist backing off, I mean, the, the ping already came out, let's see if they can make something happen here. Yeah, I really just, I don't know how much I love these d laning decisions from Musi. I think they got too clever for their own sake. But, Papa Shang is going to try to generate an opportunity top onto 2-2. Two -two. The Enchantress no, is coming in. That's a kill. Happened. Yeah. Nice pick up. Lightning helping out in the end. Thought he was going to get run away, but still the, the stun coming out from the line. And the, I have to say, the last set damage more high or higher than I thought it would be. In the meantime, also an another kill, another lane. So we now had a kill on every single lane. Puck able to get the kill on the Nature's Prophet. We already talked about it, or you already talked about it, that that's Enchantress coming out of the jungle could mean death for Tutu, who TPs back to the lane to get himself some experience again. Right. Uh, the lion damage is mostly, I mean, they pulled him the way that you would pull a Puck, and the end result of this is that lion has 56 starting damage, whereas Puck ends up in, like, the 60s. But still, it's a decent amount of damage, and he's doing just fine in the middle because... Uh, Musi didn't pick up punishing. I mean, they had two mids who can both punish the lion very easily, uh, at least for the first few levels, and instead they chose to put Alchemist there. So, Bio, he's last hitting okay. He's 9 for 2, CTY is 11 for 8, but he is getting some XP loss, and they're basically winning every lane except for 2 twos because 2 2 has a death. Yeah, of course, the other two deaths were happening on the side of. Uh of Musi, and it looks like we have another Alchemist in trouble. Split Earth, we're gonna follow up on the Earth Spike, and that should be Alchemist down again. Lion with the last hit, in comes the Centaur from the Enchantress, but won't be able to get anything with it. Yeah. With the DD rune, Lion suddenly actually feels pretty good about his, his damage, so... Alchemist, he can come back, but now we're getting close to Finger of Death time. And Finger of Death time is a very dangerous time for an Alchemist who doesn't even have Chemical Rage. Yeah, I'm not sure if you can hear people outside. Yes, well, yes. I can't it sounds like there is a, a thriving blacksmithy in your... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds like that is indeed. But that's people working on the street, so just to clear that up. But um, yeah, I have a blacksmith outside my house. It's cool. It's very... Annoying. I don't know. Maybe things work differently in Holland. <laughs> yep, yeah, they definitely do.
We got FY already uh, with Boots, of course, he did take the, the first blood, so was able to get that very early. And with that, he can just lay down some more harassment up on some more people. In this case, the Enchantress, and we'll be able to... No, oh, the neutrals take it. No, no deny, even though they tried it, but the neutrals end up taking the kill. In comes Alchemist, level 5, FY, back away in time. We do also have the Nyx Assassin rotating, but, you know, the ward there scouted that out, so... Yeah, it looks like we have a bit of a peace and quiet here for the lanes for now. Fenrir has rotated uh, back towards the base and is now coming back bottom. He does carry a smoke with him, so might be uh, looking to try and get himself a kill again on the Alchemist, perhaps, although Enchantress is still close by. I think Enchantress can't actually go in here. Um, she takes a stun, an earth, a level 3 Earth Spike, and a finger. I think she's dead with one auto attack, so she can't approach. This has been essentially a failed Enchantress. I mean, she participated in one kill on 2-2, but they probably wanted more out of this, and he, he's farming pretty slowly in the jungle because he's been trying to generate these opportunities. You'd want her to be already at level 4. Yeah, look at this. The smoke was there. Fenrir and FY hanging around the Alchemist, and Bio knows, knows that something is wrong. I mean, supports are missing from the map, and he's already died twice. Doesn't want to make it a third time. I mean, you know... That's kind of would be uh, like, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on you. <laughs> fool me thrice, <laughs> shame on me. Something like that. At some point, you can't get fooled again. That's all I know. Uh, so VG, however, they are also sort of rotating for kills and not getting that many. They're leading three one, but FY is still level two on the Shadow Demon. If you have to have a hero, oh at level wait two a for... second, they're boxing in the next assassin. They know exactly where he is. The Soul Catcher already there. Nice split Earth. That should be a nice pickup. Ooh, nice. Spike Carapace, but that, you know, ooh, Impale, nah, he goes down. Does do a lot of damage before he dies, though. He did, that was generous, but they have a cell for him. And 2-2, two, two, the, the attempt once again from Papa Song's Enchantress, and CTY just comes in. He's not even bothering to give her the finger of death. He just, you know, and you know hits what her the, with the Earth Spike. But the weird thing was, Enchantress tried that by herself because the puck went bottom. Yeah, I don't, I honestly don't really understand. <laughs> I think there was a bit of a miscommunication because I was like, you know, okay, good puck bottom, oh, nothing happened. Another on top. disruption. Yeah, nice face nice shift face though. Shift. And that should be Puckstill Dream Coil. Helps him get away. Goes I, I just own. sorry, I'm cracking up at the blacksmith. It's just are they, so I know you already have the one claymore. Is he making a second claymore for you? No, you can't make anything with a claymore. Like he is probably uh, making someone something for someone else because I already have mine. He's making your shadow amulet. Natch, right? Yeah, but I don't think blacksmith can actually get the shadow thingy. Oh, I'm sure it's metal. It's gotta be metal. Maybe he's what, like, making a me a cloth? battle fury and he's getting a broadsword. It could be. Could be. Actually, the sword that I have hanging behind me is more of a broadsword than a than a claymore, I think. So. Oh, come on! CTY. I think that By was himself, a puck? That shouldn't happen with a puck. Probably but not. then again. Uh, the Lion Finger of Death actually has an extremely short travel time, so, but he was probably stunned, oh, right? Oh, wait a second, Pe Papa Jean, getting Split Earth, Lightning, boom, gone. Ownage. I mean, VG Gaming is just all over the place, here comes the Alchemist, maybe he can do something, lands a stun, only upon Fenrir, but there goes the Acid Spray as well, might be enough, there is also a troll chasing him down from the side lane, Nyx Assassin can't get anything done, and in comes the rest of Vici. They block Alchemist in, and they take him down. That's Chemical cool. Rage just to totally forgotten. He could have gotten it off, but nope, doesn't want to have it. Look, FY looking for disruption, finds it as well. The, um, awkward Impale, and that's gonna be probably Nyx Assassin getting boxed in. In comes that SMJ from the sidelines. Are they gonna chase us past the tier 2? Open wounds, Spike Carapace is there, and it looks like we're gonna see them backing up, but FY getting netted in. In comes the puck again as well, goes for silence and an orb, and that should be a kill. Finally, they get something in return. Dream Coil up on the life stealer. In comes the Alchemist as well, but the Rage is there. He wants to try and pick up the Queen of Pain. He has to run. That's gonna be a life stealer going down. Zed SMJ totally overextending, and Imuxi takes Two kills off the back of that, and I don't think they, like, I don't think Vici needed to give them away, but they felt so confident. I mean, it's going so well for them that I kind of can't blame them for their overextension. Yeah, I mean, VG are a pretty hot-blooded team. If they're winning by a lot, they're going to just try to win it. They're not going to say, oh, great time for us to farm. They'll say, no, let's get even more kills. 
Speaking of getting even more kills, CTY with this haste rune. He's trying to spot out the courier, maybe? Although, Lion's horrible auto attack is going to make it difficult to actually kill it. Well, he killed off the puck earlier, but now he doesn't have a finger of death. No finger, yeah. It's such a long cooldown at level 1. Meanwhile, the rest of the team just attempting to gank, uh, I guess, TT again? Maybe they're unhappy that this Nyx Assassin got away from them with Spike Carapace last time? Perhaps. But they rotate back to the lane. Wait. I mean, lane is not pushed out, so... Why miss last level hits? Yeah, they should at least level Lion to 11. He's the highest level on the map by 3. And if he got to 11 quickly, he would get that rank 2 finger of death. If he could get the rank 2 finger of death before he actually uses it next, it would be so much saved time on the cooldown. A full minute saved. But this is actually... Like, okay, we know that it's going the way of VG Gaming, but the levels are quite dreadful, even. I mean, a Queen of Pain, uh, she's... Supports? No, on everybody of of Moosey, I mean, they are... Oh, yeah, yeah. They have a level 7 Queen of Pain. They can't do anything, puck level 7, and those two heroes normally go mid because they need a level advantage and then use that to, you know, create space all over the map. And right now, they can't do that because they're just Radiance getting out leveled very hard. And they're getting out Definitely. farmed. They are? They're getting everything. Like, yeah. nothing. Their lanes were very strange, I feel. Almost... I don't want to say pubish, but I, I don't really understand what they were trying to go for other than maybe getting a lot of XP. Which, as you said, I mean, they haven't really gotten it. VG have sacrificed some support XP, but they've gotten amazing levels on Lion, good levels on Nature's Prophet, and ZSMJ leveling very well, also. Yeah, we have an Invis rune on CTY. He had it for a while, it's gonna run out soon. But he was able to just run past almost uh, the half the team of uh, Moosey. And he's going to try to catch out the Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain hasn't got a blink. She just used it. Tries to hide. And is successfully uh, doing so. CTY is actually hunting the Cobbled Taskmaster. That's a blink to... dagger, by the way. Did you say that already? Did I miss it? No, I didn't. CTY it, blink it dagger. A, it's a great pickup. Because it gives him even more capacity to just initiate and win a fight. He's got his full rank Hex, his full rank Earth Spike. I... He has any, even, a, even a rank of stats because he doesn't bother with such paltry, crappy spells as Mana Drain. Yeah, it looks like Vichy Gaming is... After the two kills that Moosey got, they giving, they're giving... Like, a little bit of a pause to them. Blink in. Hex, he got a finger of death. Looking for the puck. Here comes the Impale as well, and that's gonna be a kill. Oh, so now we know what happened last time. Dominating CTY. 4 for 0 for 1. Yeah, and in the meantime, Hex, the middle tower goes down. Hex has no wind-up, so as long as Puck isn't out by the by that point, once he sees you, basically, he has to unquestionably uh, both throw the orb and phase shift and then shift to the orb. And in this case, now that, now that CTY is blink, he just blinks on top of you, Hexes, your reactions can't be fast enough to prevent that. And once Puck is hexed, he's done, essentially. Uh, with 891 <clears throat> HP, the lion's probably going to kill him. Yeah, and there's no way he is close to his Blink Dagger. Queen of Pain not close to any item either, he just got Tread, so that might help a little bit, but the net worth difference is so troublesome that, like, we have got three people above 5k of VG Gaming, and the highest up on Musi is 2700. It's almost double for everybody on the opposing team, it's... Okay, so let's rephrase this. What does Musi need to do to keep themselves in the game? Okay, so first off, uh, they need to find some one lane that they can feel stable in, and ideally it would be bottom. They need to counter ward everything, so right now there's four, okay, now three observer wards from Dyer, all completely blocking off most of the map of Musi. At the very least, they have to counter ward those. At least you're fighting a team that hasn't bothered to get a gem or anything. They have counter warded you, but not gemmed. So get rid of every single one of these wards, Try to get the the your jungle under control. Obviously put a ward right here at the rune spot or somewhere around here to control the paths into your jungle. And farm that, that with everybody. Or have everybody protect the alchemist while he acid sprays the whole thing down. Deal with the fact that Puck and Pop are going to be under leveled. And maybe try to come back into the game that way. That's about all they can do, honestly. CTY, uh, well actually... Yeah, it'll be ZSMJ with the Aegis. CTY picked up the medallion for faster Roche, and it actually helps his solo kill potential. Yeah, and at the same time as Roche was going on, we saw Musi smoking up. And they're hoping that someone comes top to farm, but someone of their team already pinked on the bottom lane, and he was the one that was right, because that is where Vici Gaming is going towards. 
And they should be able to take this tower. They've got level 2 in Edict. It might not be max level, but it is enough to take the tower down real fast. There is still a fortification, but I think Muti want to save that for, of course, their racks once they are under, under attack, because that might be within 5 minutes. I mean, they do have this Nature's Prophet who has Midas Mech. This is great for, you know, healing up the team as they push into the tower. They've got a Siege Creep. They can continue this push. Uh, they don't need CTY for it. Lion's not the world's best pusher. And they have a good push composition with just the Lashrak and the Nature's Prophet. Acid sprays down, so this will clear out this creep if they're gonna call it off. Yeah, they they're just TPing in. in with an infest out, going on the queen or on the puck. Nice dream coil up on three, but puck getting hexed and killed off. Sonic Wave does still do a little bit of damage and almost gets the CTY lion, but the disruption will keep him safe and enchantress will go down as well. Four people taken down, and that is gonna be another fight going the way of VG Gaming. And I mean they knew it was coming. They had that ward standing there and they saw the lion making their way over. They think, okay, there's no way lion is gonna run by himself into that. And then, you know, they were try they were aiming to take the fight. And it just didn't work out. It just didn't work out. Didn't good defensive disruption Very from FY good. there, also to protect CTY. I mean, that was just great play from VG. Unexpectedly jumping in. I mean, the Nature's Prophet carrying the Lifestealer. Something you're always watching out for when you face a team composed of these heroes. But still, somehow took them by surprise. They blew up quite a few people, didn't kill them, brought them fairly low, just with the entry of the Nature's Prophet of the Lifestealer. And that's enough to win a fight, more or less. And they're really extending their lead, extending their control. Currently, VG just looking like they... Dropped! But it's also, when reset it, it's working again, so I don't know why. Alright. Fair enough. Queen of Pain and Nyx Assassin trying to get out of here. Nyx is stealth. That's a decent uh, impale. Didn't catch FY and Fenrir. Here comes the SMJ. They're going to get TT. Trivial. Yeah. And disruption onto the high ground. Who's up here? It is a GK, so he should be able to blink away. It's only rank 2 blink, but I'm not sure how they actually chase him all the way. Yeah, they won't. They He's won't. okay. Maybe actually CTY. Nah. He had to blink up, but not enough mana to actually take him down. So we are going right. to see Vici trying to push up the high ground. They have to walk through the they acid can. spray, but it's about to vanish, I think. And um, they're just waiting until it's over. And of course, in the meantime, waiting for their creep wave, because that's actually quite far away, their creep wave, that is. That's true. They do have to wait for that. They can clear the creep wave up here. There's no reason not to. Keep in mind, they, they got that very easy Roche after CTY built the medallion. Still have two minutes on the siege. Just might as well use it to end this game. I don't really see much of a way that Musi can defend their own high ground. Essence Spray is a decent start. I would have loved to see it a bit higher because uh, VG can just sort of walk past the Essence Spray here and no longer have the uh, D armor, but it's enough to at least delay the push a little bit. I yeah. think they just. They're gonna go, go for again. it. Sonic, trying to sun it up. Here comes a nice Sonic Wave, but a brilliant disruption again from FY, keeping CTY safe. We are gonna see a nice impill up on the Alchemist who's gonna get eaten up by ZSMJ. Finger of Death helping out. T also dying in the meantime. Of course, the Aegis is still off on the life sealer. Looks like he is gonna need it. There we go. That's a tower hit right there. But Fichi Gaming still with full five people. They've not got a mechanism anymore. They don't have the mana up on two two. But he'll TP back in just a moment after regening on the base. And without an alchemist, the fight and of course without the sonic wave as well, the, the fighting potential for Musi is just nearly not existent. It has to be said that that was FY, even on an, an under level. Well, it's not under level by now, but for a while it was very, very under level Shadow Demon. He still finds a way to make big plays. Those yep. are two huge defensive disruptions in two consecutive fights. Haha, <laughs> Tutu trying to snipe the courier. I think he dies for that decision. Oh no, another disruption nope. coming in because he can. Here comes Alchemist. He's trying to stun, but he won't be able to. Ends up going down, as does the Enchantress. Down goes the Nature's Prophet as well, but TT will pay for that, and that's. Three on the sidelines, one buys back, melee racks go down, it looks like Vici might be taking their leave right now, but they did of course win that fight, Take the, took the racks, and are still very far ahead in this game. 20k gold, 12k experience, and oh my god, is Vici ahead. Yeah, I mean, not only have they Radiant sort of taken the early game, yeah, there's the G. We see, I think they're <clears throat> well done with this game, they don't want to play anymore, and I, I agree. They didn't really have a shot back into it. It's fine. They have a pretty long day ahead, just simply because they are playing the last game of the day. So you might as well get a little bit of rest between these two periods, because there's almost no way to claw the game back in here. With two heroes in the form of the Queen of Pain and the Puck, both of whom need levels and maybe an item two or two to be effective to get that snowballing effect, 
And Queen of Pain, this was a particularly frustrating game to play this hero because of how many sonic waves just were ruined by the intercession of the FY Shadow Demon Disrupt. This guy, I mean, we talk about him in nearly every game, and it's because he is just so extremely strong, his ability to take these heroes that require these ex execution gates and just execute the hell out of them. Yeah. And of course, FY, uh, sorry, CTY, pretty dominant lion performance as well. Yeah, this was, by the way, in the last game of both of these teams. Uh, Musi end on 0-5 in the group stages, while Vici Gaming manages to get themselves to 3-2, to two, and they're gonna probably be on par with Orange, but it doesn't really matter. Both of those might be going through, but it really depends on the next game, because Orange will be taken on Royal in the next matchup, and that will be their last game as well. So stick around for that game. As, um, well, I believe... Um, yeah, that is gonna be our last Group A matchup, so after that we're heading back to Group B, and then we'll see DK, LTD International, Redding, Rattlesnake, and Rising Stars again, but Royal and Orange is gonna be our last matchup for Group A, so stick around for that, you are watching, of course, the Red Bull Esports Champions League, brought to you by Beyond the Summit, my name is Shiver, co-caster is Vickermond, and we will have ourselves the next game coming on real soon, so stick around. <laughs> 